Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today, uh, it's going to get chilly. It's going to get a little bit salty because uh, we're reviewing Event Leviathan number six, the finale, if you could call it that, in uh, the Event Leviathan. There's just too many air quotes involved in this book to even get started. So let's talk about it today on Comic Book News. Well, hey, if you've been watching uh, any of my reviews of uh, Event Leviathan or what's been going on in Superman lately, you know that I'm not super thrilled with this book, okay? So uh, we got to issue number five in my last review and I said, look, if this is not an incredible, blows me out of the water ending that I was not expecting but is, but is great, then... Uh, Man, I'm gonna feel really ripped off, and 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 I do. Okay, the events of this six issues—it's taken six months to tell this story, including this six-issue miniseries and a ten-dollar price gouge in one-shot to start the whole thing. That was critical. That was really the only really important stuff happened in that one shot, and then this six issues was endless discussion and talk all taking place over the course of one one night yet this took six months to unwind and is in, unfolding in other books continuity wise and editing wise it's a freaking mess and uh just from a storytelling perspective it is really not doing it for me you know uh but hey you know where we gotta go we gotta go to the million dollar comics kid. it's the only way the only way we get to the bottom of these things is in the Million Dollar Comics cam, right? Ooh, and I almost gave it away there. I got a special extra bonus. I'm also going to review Superman 17 that came out this week because, uh, well, I need a little ray of sunshine, I guess. Um, for now, let's talk Event Leviathan. <sighs> Issue 5 left us on our cliffhanger of who is this guy? He's finally going to reveal himself to Superman. Now we get yet another flashback. Superman going, comforting Lois. They're all talking to the Manhunter. They sort of like, somehow, her technology got implicated. The technology we're seeing, so they thought it was her. But Batman's clear right here, like she's a patsy. It's not her. It's just Manhunter tech. Right? And what is man? Who are the Manhunters? They're like the the the, the proto Green Lantern Corps, right? They were before the Green Lanterns. The they created these guys, the gar, uh, uh, the Manhunters, right? And there have been various books. They, this came out in 1975, and there have been various books trying to make these guys into something, but nobody really cared. The, actually, my favorite Manhunter was probably this Manhunter, the 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 sort of latest version, and is a the kind of character that's a perfect fit for Bendis. It's the kind of character, the kind of book that Bendis should be writing, not crossover event superhero books, because this book proves that he can't do that. I, I'm not even, gonna, I don't even care. I'm not even going to go too much more into the plot here. All I'm going to say is that, like, if there's a contest this year for worst event comic, uh, uh, the, Heroes in Crisis and this one are neck in neck, and they're going to fight it out for worst of the worst. So we get more endless exposition and talk and flashback. And oh, we get a scene where they decide, oh, somebody's probably watching them. So let's all talk in sign language. So we get a double page spread full of people talking in sign language. But in a comic, it's not, it just looks stupid. And who cares? We've come all this way. We've had all the greatest detectives sitting around in a room talking about shit, talking about who it can, might be or maybe is or could be, but probably isn't. And it was none of them. Nobody even came close to the truth. These are detectives? Okay, here comes Talia al Ghul to, to, uh, and, and the crew of other detectives, the secret other group of detectives that's been behind the scenes doing stuff. Doing what? Do we know? We get a little flashback that tells us I would rather read these stupid Svengoolie and Snickers ads than this comic at this point, which is a shame. 
because this is it, the artwork is beautiful. Maleev is fantastic. The dialogue is crap. The idea is is okay and reasonable. This could have maybe been a six issue arc, even in su the Superman and Action Comics. That's where it belonged. It did not belong. Did not deserve to have the word event on it, and it did not does not deserve um, much at all here. Because here we get to see the showdown. They've figured out who Leviathan is, and it's Paul Kirk, the previous Manhunter. Who cares? I mean, maybe we could have cared if we had a reason to care. If he had been one of the suspects along with our array of other suspects and maybe like revealed, but we got nothing, man. They call this a thriller. Where's the thrills? They call this a mystery with clues in every issue. There was n very little to go on or very that little that was worth caring about. And all we get out of this is he escapes and Lois is like, oh, we chalk this up as a win because I get to publish the story, right? And that's what this whole thing is. I mean, the story really was Lois Lane centered and that's okay. Even though she has her own book, she has a 12 issue maxi series going on right now that nobody's reading, who cares? Uh, because it was tied into this stuff, but this is all happening during one night. So how is all that other stuff? I don't even want to think about it because I'm, I'm wasting too much mental effort even thinking about it. And so in the end, Leviathan is revealed. He had a secret plan, which was, get this, I'm going to reveal all the secrets of the world to the world and end all the all this stuff. So suppose he had all the secrets, but they stopped him from revealing it. They revealed his secret instead. He tried to recruit Superman basically by killing his father-in-law, killing Lois Lane's dad like in front of him and somehow expecting that Superman's going to join in on their battle to r reveal all the secrets. Garbage. Garbage. I hated it. You know, how is this all? And now it's just going to get continued back in Action Comics, which ironically is the only Bendis book I've really been liking. I hadn't been liking Superman either because of all the stupid... Jonathan Kent stuff and it's not even about them aging him or ruining Clark's chance to see his son grow up that's a bunch of garbage too uh, it's just it was not good it was not good storytelling it was super disjointed and just seemed like it was just all just a way to get Superboy out of Superman's life and into the 31st century in the Legion of Superheroes which is where he is now so here we are Superman 17 and it's already been spoiled here that Superman is going to reveal his identity, right? So time for the truth. Was it this issue? No, it's not this issue. This is just a bunch of big build up and tease. So why am I even bothering to review it? Well, it's got art by the great Kevin McGuire, uh, who, who I used to love in the, the, the day back doing Justice League. And it's just an, a, a really great artist. This is his sort of newer style. He is just, he's not the colorist, but he's the artist, I think he's credited as. Let's see here. Artist, yeah, and Paul mounts with colors, so I think he's using a computer these days. Either way, he's doing pencils and inks, whatever. He's doing finished art, except for colors, on his own. And it looks great. It looks different. It looks a little smoother than we're used to. It makes me think he's using computers, but not in any negative sense. Like I think that artists use the best tools for the job, and the modern tools really let you pull off some cool stuff. So if you can take that amazing hand-trained artist sensibility and apply it to new tools, you can get really great looking stuff. And I think this is great looking stuff. Really cool looking super spread, man. Funny stuff, you know, McGuire's known for his comical faces and stuff. He's one of those guys who can just capture all the crazy uh, Justice League faces. And uh, this was a, a, a the beautiful to look at but I'm um, kind of painful to read. It's like Superman sort of teasing the idea that, oh, we can't have Superman anymore, Lois, you and I. They've been dancing around this whole, like, Superman and Lois kind of split, semi-splitting up thing for a while. To be honest, I kind of hope that's where they're going. I don't like the married family man life superheroes, despite being one myself. Uh, maybe that's why. Uh, no, I, it's just that it's, 
not great for drama and stories necessarily to have your guys be fat and happy. Um, anyway, uh, we get to see uh, a lot of cool stuff here. I'm not even going to review the whole thing. I don't want to spoil it because it's worth reading. It's worth picking this comic up just to look at the super pretty McGuire artwork um, and watch him draw Superman. It's pretty enjoyable. This is where Superman basically is, you know, approaching Supergirl, and he's he's like, "Look, <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, something's gonna happen, and it's gonna affect you, most of all." I guess they're sort of teasing that he's gonna be revealed, but everybody knows he's gonna reveal a secret, and we're gonna have public Superman. Okay, we saw it happen with Daredevil, and then <clears throat> we saw it happen with Iron Man in the comics, and then Spider Man, but they took it back. With Superman, it almost makes sense. I mean, especially, you gotta be a moron not to make a connection between uh, Clark Kent and Superman and Lois Lane, right? Just like the fact that Lois is married to, to, to Clark and Superman looks is Clark Kent. Like, somebody has to have said, like, that guy looks a little like, or there's some... Nobody does? Okay, so now we get to finally sidestep that. We get Superman to step up and be the global guardian he's always gonna be he's always meant to be. I am actually gonna keep reading action comics and probably Superman too. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna review it anymore. Sorry. Most of you guys don't watch it. I'll bet you not many people will watch this. And uh, and I can't really blame you because if you got on board for Event Leviathan you got really disappointed by one of the all-time greats. Bendis has written amazing comics. Even he writes these endless middle serial things, but he's written them so much better in the past that it's just a shame. I think his talents are wasted on these uh, marquee premier super characters. He should be writing more lower-level street characters. He could have been writing a question miniseries, although there is a cool one, one that looks like it's cool coming pretty soon by other another team. He didn't need Superman and a Batman book, which he's doing, and relaunch the Legion of Superheroes, and an event comic all his own that nobody really cares about. It's a non-event. Bendis, you blew it. It's endless, bendless. And I'm bummed. You know what I'm not bummed about? I'm not bummed about this channel. I'm not bummed about all the fun I've had interacting with you people out there especially the comments that you make. Uh, I got a few diehard fans that are watching every video and commenting all the time. Coffee breath. We love it. Thanks for participating. Thanks for watching the show and liking and sharing and doing all of those things you do that are making this uh, a world of fun for me. We'll see you next time.